Today we're in pursuit of giant whitetails in Kansas. No guides, no outfitters. You're watching In Pursuit of Legends. Programming brought to you by Huskama Optics. Nothing safe within a thousand yards. Best of the West shooting systems. Long distance, precision, accuracy. Challenger Sports Bar. Legendary hunts call for epic celebration. 511 Tactical. Purpose built gear for life's most demanding missions. Shoot and see reactive targets. Shoot more, shoot better. The Land Leader. Find the best land for sale on the market today. Well, thanks for watching this week's episode of In Pursuit of Legends. We're out in Kansas chasing one particular whitetail buck, but a lot of trail cam pictures, we've just never seen him during daylight hours. Capone's been a nocturnal buck the two years we've known him. We've never laid our eyes on him, but we're hoping some abnormally cold weather there in mid-November is gonna get him on his feet. Thanks for watching. Well, it's early March here in Kansas. Came and uh, checked a couple spots already looking for some of the bucks that we've been watching all last year. and. We found the buck we came in to find. We came to the pond spot, and sure enough, we found Capone's set laying side by side, right where we thought they would be. You know, we got over 150 pictures of this buck all last year, never did lay eyes on him. He broke his flyer back here and his main beam. They actually, his main beams almost touched last year. Broke his G4 on this side, but we guessed him at a four and a half year old deer, so good news is he made it through another season, and hopefully he'll, uh, he'll be in the same place come next fall, and, Capone, we'll be looking for him come November. Well, it's July 31st. We're out here in Kansas. We got some stands to set. We got to throw up some, some cuddyback cameras. We got to throw out some trophy rocks. One place in particular we're looking to go set up on this pond draw. I got probably 140, 150 pictures of a buck we call Capone. He really is the boss buck. You know, we actually found his sheds this spring. We got about 150 pictures of him in the fall, October, November, December. Just never could close the deal on him. Never even seen him. You know, the, I was getting pictures almost nightly of them, but that's the problem. They were all nighttime pics. Standing Milo, I'll tell you, I sure hope uh, this commitment pays off come this fall, but it's tough to walk through it, especially when you got to go half a mile back with this saw. Uh, but I'll tell you what, it's pretty lightweight and it does wonders, so glad to have it. A couple more sets, we'll be done for the night, so we'll see. See if all this hard work pays off in a couple months. One of the most amazing pieces of equipment that we've had the privilege of using is the Quiet Cat. It's a portable electric ATV with a five horsepower electric motor. It's a fantastic, easy, convenient piece of equipment that we use to get around. And I'll tell you what, what it does best for me is it takes away that human intrusion. It allows me to get into trail cameras, get into set tree stands, and that human intrusion is greatly reduced. You know what I like most about the Quiet Cat? It's strong, it's rugged, and it's covert. It's also made for off-road. You know, hunting in the Rocky Mountains, some of those trails can be pretty rugged, but not for the Quiet Cat. 
The maneuverability is unbelievable. Not only that, they're affordable. For more information, you can check them out at quietcat.com. From hunting and shooting sports to law enforcement and tactical applications, Huskamaw has you covered. These scopes are built to last and come with the best glass in the industry, offering you unparalleled low light capabilities, all topped with a patented custom windage enabled BDC turret. And now, after two years of field testing, Huskamaw is pleased to bring you the new HD binoculars. No matter your optical needs, the Huskamaw advantage is crystal clear. Introducing the completely redesigned pivoting headline of cameras by Icon. Three models, any position, all applications. You have spoken, we have listened. Icon Trail Cameras. Farming is our life. Hunting is our life passion. We know that in both, it's what's planted in the ground first that matters. And that's why we choose Antler King food plot mixes. Our results speak for themselves. Antler King, bigger bucks, healthier deer. Fog pod, monopods, bipods, tripods, and accessories are the most versatile line of shooting sticks available. All bog pod shooting rests are switcheroo compatible. The switcheroo system allows you to interchange systems for multiple uses all throughout the year. Versatility defined. Accuracy anywhere. Bog pod. wasn't locked on a doe, but he was definitely keeping her in close proximity. She actually came into about 25. I could have shot her all day long. He stayed on the other side of the creek at some thick stuff. Unfortunately, I couldn't shoot through the limbs. Pat had great video of him. He's a great buck. He's probably, I don't know, 143, maybe 145 at best. He's a narrow, pretty tall eight point, but he's stout. He's heavy. He's a cool deer. Finally checked a bunch of properties, hit enough spots, and found out where they're actually starting to rut. And this is the spot, so we'll be right back here tomorrow morning. Fingers crossed we get it done. Well, thank you for joining me on today's Tactic for Success. Today I'd like to talk about one of the most important aspects to our style of hunting, and that's scent control. When it comes to scent control, we believe that there is a regimen that you should follow that starts with personal hygiene, to your hunting clothing, to your travels, to getting to your hunting spot. When it comes to your clothing, we believe that your hunting clothing should always be washed in a non-scent laundry detergent. Prior to doing that, you should always desensitize your washer and dryer. Once your hunting clothing is washed and dried, it should be placed into a scent-free bag or tote. You should also have traveling clothes. What I mean by traveling clothes is they're clothes that are also washed in laundry detergent that's scent free and they should only be used for traveling. When you leave your hotel or camp or home to go to your hunting destination, you should be in these clothes. These clothes should be strictly used for driving to your hunting destination and then once you get there, you should get out of those clothes, into your hunting clothes, out of your scent free bag or tote, spray down with your field spray and then head to your stand or into the woods. And then after you're done hunting, you should do that in reverse. Come back to your vehicle, get out of your hunting clothing, put them back into the scent-free tote or uh, bag, uh, get into your traveling clothing, use your traveling clothing all the way back to wherever you're going, your hotel, camp, home, and then get out of your traveling clothes and put them in an area where they're not gonna pick up a lot of scent and then get into your lounging or your relaxing or camp clothes, whatever it may be. If you apply these tips and tactics to your next hunt, I guarantee it'll help you be more successful. Thank you for joining me on today's segment, Tactics for Success. In 2001, Best of the West began the legacy of long range hunting. Since then, our craft has dramatically evolved using the finest components available with state-of-the-art machining methods. 
The only way to reach the highest standard of quality is by doing it ourselves. Best of the West shooting systems. Fog Zero is a series of treatment and cleaning products for glass and reflective surfaces. Developed by chemists and pharmacists, the formula is eco-friendly and effective for up to 30 days after treatment. This kit contains everything you need to effectively and quickly treat and clean your glass products. The results are unparalleled and the lasting quality of the product is incredible. It's November 9th here in the hardwoods of Kansas. Patrick and I slept into a spot that we hunted last night because we got the same good wind. Sure enough, I've seen another mature deer, maybe four. He might have been five years old. He's already with a doe. You're not going to call a big buck away from his doe. He's just not going to leave. At best, you can get that doe to come under you and he'll follow. But he was a mainframe 11, probably a mid 150s deer. That's the second buck in the last 12 hours that has cut this corner of these trees into this Milo. One did it to us last night, a four and a half year old. Big heavy eight point. And then it happened again with a big 11 point that's probably mid 150s. Great deer, best deer I've seen on hoof so far. It's great seeing big deer, but it gets frustrating when they're with those because they just won't break. I snore wheeze, I got desperate, but he just wasn't leaving her. He'd look. Believe me, he'd look, but he just wouldn't come in. Just pulled up to the pond set. It's the morning of November 11th. It's brutally cold. You know, it's only supposed to be high in the single digits today. I seen a big deer on his feet on November 8th, another big shooter on November 9th. We didn't even get to hunt yesterday. It was literally 40 mile an hour winds, blowing snow, bitter cold. It's still gonna be bitter cold today. We got a 20 mile an hour north wind and uh, eager to get in there. It's tough sitting it out on November 10th, but it's just not safe to get into a tree stand with 40 mile an hour winds. But plenty of big shooters on this property. One in particular, I'm looking for Capone, but I'm just hoping I can stay in a tree stand long enough to actually see some deer. So I'm gonna uh, get dressed and uh, get in there. So it's plenty early, but I hope I'm not absolutely crazy doing this. I have one deer in mind. That's Capone. I've never seen him. I may never see him, but I've never had this cold of weather in mid-November during the run, so maybe this will get him on his feet. We'll just sit it out and wait. It's about 9.30. shooting lane. I think I just seen Capone. Big white rat buck. He's behind this pond. I came in a full draw on this buck. He's probably maybe 140s. And I just happened to look left and I seen time so I came out of draw but we'll see if we can get him in. Tim, it's Capone. He's coming right this way. Oh, boy. It's gotta cross a creek. Oh, God, big deer. It's the first time I've ever seen him. Here he comes, here he comes.
I just undoubtedly shot at the biggest white tail of my life. That's Capone. Five and a half year old mega giant white tail. Probably in the 190s, maybe better. So, we'll see. So humbled if I can put my hands on that deer. That will probably undisputably be one of the, or if not the biggest deer of my whole life that I'll probably ever shoot. It's funny how that works, you know. It's been about a week since I put an arrow in Capone, undoubtedly the largest whitetail I've ever shot at, and probably the largest whitetail I've ever seen on hoof. Unfortunately, we bumped him. You know, I waited four hours to go in there, and sure enough, there was good blood. We went in about 100 yards just before I was about to call it, and back out again, we bumped him. And uh, he was bedded behind a fallen down log, and he just barely moved off. He kind of walked off. He didn't even run, so we knew he was hit pretty good. And from where I could see where the blood was coming from, it looked like you know, low liver, it was definitely in the rib cage. So we backed out, gave him 24 hours, went back in there, followed the blood for about half a mile before he bedded down again. He bedded down in between two picked cornfields and uh, in a thick little hedgerow there. He was gone, I found the blood all the way to where he bedded down, no deer and the blood stopped. So I contacted the farmer who just so happens he was moving his combine that evening that I had shot Capone and sure enough he bumped him. So. We spent countless days, you know, scouring everything to the west. I had shot him to the east, he worked his way west. I figured that he would have went west. Uh, just made sense to me that he went double back, but we've searched miles and miles of that creek to the west under every bush and thicket and anywhere a deer could hide, we looked. and We just haven't been able to find him and it's been very disheartening, so. I've been looking up here and uh, trying to review the shot and I probably watched the footage a thousand times and I think I've pinpointed exactly where that arrow went in. And it's definitely in the rib cage and I believe it's a little liver so undoubtedly the deer is dead. I just have to find him. Steve and I are going back out there in a couple days here. We have some Nebraska rifle tags and um, I have no blood and nothing else to go off of so we're just going to kind of roll the dice on this one. I'm going to go to what with what I know and. You know, 150 plus pictures of this deer. I'm gonna go back to his core range. It's a long shot, but I'm not ready to give up on Capone. So we're gonna stay persistent and see if we can't put our hands on him yet. Unfortunately, this is not the way you wanna find him. We have so much history with this deer on this 160, all the pictures and his sheds and everything else. Let's just go walk it. We haven't walked it, we've walked it. Miles and miles of the creek to the west. We've hit every thicket, every plum thicket, every bush. Anywhere a deer could crawl and hide, we hit it. And he just wasn't there. So we figured, one, maybe he would go back to water, which a lot of our pictures are on this little hidden pond, a lot of thick cover around it. We figured he'd get a fever and head back to water, or he'd come back here and die in his, in his home ground here in this core area. We weren't walking for five minutes, and I spotted him here, not 80 yards where we found his sheds this spring, and it just, really tough on me you know I mean it's it all came full circle you know all of our history for the last two years has been here and this is not how you want to find him but fortunately for us we did find him I confirmed that he was for sure mortally hit and we did find him and I thank God for that and Capone is coming home Well, that makes it official. That's not the way you want to punch your tags with any deer, whether a doe or 185 inch whitetail, but this officially closes the chapter on Capone. Very humbled and very, I don't even know what to say. I'm just, 
just humbled to be able to even sign that. Kind of thought I wasn't going to fill it out. When archery hunting, how long do you wait to track a hit whitetail when you're not 100% certain of the hit and you don't see him go down? You know, whitetails are extremely tough animals. Join us for a live discussion after the episode on Facebook. Programming brought to you by Huskama Optics. Nothing safe within a thousand yards. Best of the West shooting systems. Long distance, precision, accuracy. Challenger Sports Bar. Legendary hunts call for epic celebration. Top brass. Powder, bullet, done. The Attractor Max. Bring your predator calling to the max. From Johnny Stewart, Wildlife Calls. Bog Pod. Versatility defined. Accuracy anywhere. Well, what an incredible buck. Unfortunately, you got your hands on Compone. It just didn't play out the way you thought it would. You know, it was a lesson learned. You know, we started the track job too early, and unfortunately, with the small little camera viewfinder, you can't really tell exactly where the arrow hit. It felt like a great shot. It looked, it looked like, a, like great a great shot. shot. And, you know, we're sitting there playing it back, and it looked like a 10 ring. We gave him four hours, which is normally plenty of time, and unfortunately, it wasn't long enough. And, um, Mistake on my part, and I felt terrible about it. Still feel pretty terrible about it, but ultimately, I stayed persistent. I just wouldn't let him go. I knew that that deer was dead. I just had to find him, and sure enough, we got lucky and we found him. It was almost two weeks later, but we did find him. Thanks for watching this week's episode of In Pursuit of Legends. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and check us out at inpursuitoflegends.com.